Now then, you could pretty convincingly argue that Zwift has well, revolutionized the world of indoor training. Firstly, and most notably with their cycling platform, which provides a whole host of different training options within the game. But now, more recently, with their Zwift Run 2. Yeah, now, of late, both of us have been integrating Zwift into our bike and run training in varying degrees depending on our training schedules. So off the back of that, we've teamed up with Zwift, who've kindly sent us a load of great kits so that we can share with you why we think it's such a great training tool for you too. Okay, let's be honest, triathletes, on the most part, are pretty short on time. We're not only trying to juggle the demands of three different disciplines, but also we've got busy work schedules and also not forgetting our life and maybe even family commitments thrown in on top of that too. Yeah, so regardless of whether you're an age group athlete living in a rural or an urban environment, Zwift really allows you to maximize your time available. And if indeed you are in a big city or a busy place, you can rely on the fact that you can get a purposeful workout done from the comfort of your own home, office space, or your gym without the hassle of having to negotiate getting out into the open roads to get a ride in or find trails that you can run. But on the flip side of that, I know that a lot of cyclists and runners out there are in the mindset that indoor training is only specific to certain times of the year or when the weather is poor. And that simply is not the case. Actually, indoor training can be very specific and a very effective method of training that can really benefit both the disciplines. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. And there's been an awful lot of athletes taking advantage of indoor training for, well, quite some time now. In fact, there's an awful lot of top athletes that are using Zwift as their go-to space for the bulk of their training. And they're no means limited to the likes of Lionel Sanders, Holly Lawrence, or even Jan Frodeno. So the question would be is, if athletes of this caliber are incorporating it into their training, what is the big deal about Zwift? Well, I'm pleased you asked, Fraser, because we actually have a few key areas that we're going to run through with you now. Yeah, now if you're new to the Zwift experience, then very quickly we're going to explain how you can get involved. There are quite a few ways in which you can access the platform for Zwift cycling. The preferred and best is to use a smart trainer. After that, you could sync a parameter and use a regular trainer, or more simply, you could just sync to Zwift a cadence sensor and it will then estimate a power value for you. Whilst over on the Zwift run side, we can use a treadmill. And if that treadmill isn't Bluetooth enabled, then you're gonna need something that will tell you Zwift how fast you're running. And that can be a foot pod like this or a connected shoe. Now, not only do you have the simple option to just ride or just run, you can also enter into upcoming events or races using the associated Zwift companion app. Now this app in effect turns your mobile phone or actually any other device like an iPad into a remote control to use with Zwift. And this then allows you to, well, change direction when you're on the go, be social, chat to other Zwifters. It even allows you to then use it as a calendar for these races or events that I've just been chatting about. Yeah, or alternatively, you can get involved in some of the workouts. You can follow them along throughout Zwift, but we'll get into those a little bit more later on. However, when you open up the Zwift screen, you can't fail to notice quite how many metrics you have there in a super easy template for you to follow on screen. I mean, front and center, you've got things like the speed that you're going at, your distance covered, the time that you've been on the bike, and even your elevation gain too. Now off to the left, in that corner, you've got the watts that you're putting out, plus also your cadence and your heart rate too. If, of course, you have got sensors for Zwift to pair with, just like on a regular bike computer. Yep, and over on the run side, obviously, a few of those metrics do change, but one that does remain the same is the map function, and that's over on the right-hand side, and that displays where you are on your chosen current route in relation to other Zwifters, and also that all-important gradient that you're currently running or riding on. Now, that is the beauty of the Smart Trainer, because the resistance starts to change as we're riding in-game, and we find ourselves changing gear as if we were outside. Now, I mentioned earlier how you can follow workouts within Zwift, and 
I'll be honest, this is a bit that I absolutely love about it because Zwift handily gives you prompts throughout your session as to what you're doing and, well, basically gauging your effort for that. Yeah, now, I don't know if you are like me, Mark, but if I'm riding hard outside, sometimes I'm not very good at gauging that effort. If I feel good, I'll probably push too hard, but as is most often the case, I'm usually not hurting myself enough to hit that correct power range. So this is where Zwift really comes into its own with the workout because, it's like having a coach sitting there right on your shoulder, telling you to go a bit harder or perhaps back off and go a little bit easier if you're not hitting that correct range, which I think is excellent if you're anything like me and you're just not very good at doing that. Further useful addition to the workout mode is the ability to build your own workout, where you or your coach are able to create your own session template simply by dragging and dropping different blocks of work, like warm down, warm up, labeling different sets of work like FTP, interval work, time trials, or even recovery, all just dependent on your training requirements or your racing needs. Now, the Workout Builder isn't actually currently available in Zwift Run, but it is coming soon. However, in the meantime, there is a little bit of a workaround way because by syncing your Training Peaks account with your Zwift account, when you create a workout or a session within Training Peaks, it will then appear in your Workouts menu on Zwift. Now, personally speaking, I genuinely believe that these types of sessions can truly lend themselves to the indoor environment because specific intervals can be completed as planned. Yeah, absolutely. And one of those being the fact that we can eliminate some of those external factors that are usually out of our control. Yeah, I mean, we don't even have to worry about awkward grading changes, poor road surfaces, traffic lights, or even the traffic itself we can literally get more bang from our buck from a Zwift ride by virtue of the fact that we don't have any freewheeling to contend with. I mean, every pedal stroke counts. Absolutely, Fraser, and it is that controllable aspect on the treadmill that is so, so useful to us. It allows us to really lock in and dial into that pace that we're targeting, as well as obviously not being distracted by any obstacles or external factors, similar to what you've just described on the bike. One final tool that Zwift provides, which is really useful for race prep types of workouts, is ERG mode, which essentially lets you plug in a predetermined power number, and then all you have to do, I say all, is keep up and match your trainer. If you're coping well with the workout, then your cadence is going to be nice and high, but if you're struggling and labouring, then it's going to be a real slog to turn those pedals over. And don't forget, if you have an upcoming race in a hot environment, then actually indoor training and using Zwift serves very well as an adaptation tool. So it is not simply a case of just avoiding that bad weather outside. Well, Fraser, we have covered time efficiency, how to structure your training, and some race day specifics too. Yeah, we have. And I don't know about you, but I think we have well and truly proven that indoor training is invaluable for us as triathletes. And if you aren't already including it in your training on a regular basis, then you should definitely think about giving it a go and getting stuck in too. Yeah, and if you do have any questions after this video today, then please do drop them in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and don't forget you can click on the globe and subscribe to GTN. And if you are intrigued by Zwift Run and you want to know how to use it, how to set it up, then you can watch a video on that just here.